I get you. Yeah. Oh, are we on? Oh, oh, here we are. Okay, so uh, Yuval, was it more difficult to write a book for children than for adults? Uh, yes, much more difficult. Really? You know, when you write for adults and you don't know something, you can use a lot of very difficult words and long sentences <laughs> and stuff. And they think they don't get you. But with, with kids, it doesn't work. You have to really know what you're saying. Really? Otherwise, they, they don't take it. Isn't that interesting? I always thought you could fool kids because they're stupid. <laughs> But no. also, the, they don't, they haven't heard all the stories that we believe. Ah, right. So they ask more difficult questions. Okay. Uh, Jillian, mortgage rates rose above 7% in the U.S. this week. What do you make of the Fed's monetary policy? Boy. Wow. Okay, yeah, yeah. I am the Financial Times. I was just okay? going to say. This is the boring hour where everyone goes, uh. Um, okay, basically, the Fed is in a rock and a hard place in that inflation has been rising. If it doesn't act, it could get a lot worse. But if it acts too quickly, then it's going to end up essentially... Are we going to have US a recession? I mean, probably, I see yes. we, we're already losing a lot of yeah. money in the market, right? Yeah, probably uh, yes, unfortunately. And how long will it last? Will it be bad or...? <sighs> a lot depends on what happens. Yeah. Things like, you know, um, Ukraine, war in Ukraine, yeah. elsewhere. China. China's slowing down. That's pretty significant for the global economy. Um, it's not looking great. Really no. Well, one reason we need comedy shows. The traffic is always... And also, the traffic is always lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm rooting for one. I'm just saying... <laughs> so you got to have a, you know... There's a plus. It, there's a plus. They gotta have, you got to, you know, it's like when you're in Vegas. You, you, you know, you get insurance on a hand. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Quentin, you wrote a novelization of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood last year. You pu just published your first film analysis book. What do you plan on writing next? Or I, I guess another question with this might be, is this, you know, writing, is it, how does it compare, I would want to know, to, like, filmmaking? It can't give you the kind of rush you have, but it's probably not as exhausting. Well, it's actually, well, it's interesting, especially, like, in doing something, well, okay, it's interesting because one of the things that is just really gratifying about <laughs> writing a book or something is the idea that I would really invest into writing these scripts that I would do, and I put my whole heart and soul into them, and they were like these Mount Everests I was climbing, and this one is Kilimanjaro, and the next one is Fuji, you know, and so I'm just, just, you know, just going all out there. Then I would invest all this time and all this energy, and then I'm finished with the script. Well, now I have to go and make it. Uh, you know, and if I'm happy with the script, then now it's mine to mess up uh, 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 in the in the directing of it. The thing that's really kind of cool about writing a book is like you put all your time and energy into it, and then when the book is done, you're done. I don't have to go and spend nine months uh, right. uh, you know, going out and making the movie and all that stuff, and then like spending another you know four six months uh, selling it all around the world. I still kind of do that a little bit, but you know, trying to say, it's like you know, uh, um, because usually when I would finish a screenplay. I would sort of like, I would question, should I just publish the screenplay? <laughs> because I've just put everything I have into it. And no one is ever going to read it other than the actors who are doing the movie. <laughs> I, I know that Spielberg had said at one point that making the movie was kind of drudgery for him because he'd already made it in his head. Okay, I, I'm not going as far as that because man, making a movie is like the funnest thing. Right. If you're I in a position say. to make movies, right. it's a, mm -hmm. and you can kind of do a lot with what you would like to do. I mean, God, there's just, that's yeah. hardly a better job than that. I mean, it's yes. just really great. And if you, you Pretty know, girls. Yeah, yeah. Violence. And if you're able to just, like, you know, uh, you know, I've been in a really lucky position. I can just conjure up little interesting stories that I want to tell. Yes. And, and uh, a cast of characters I get to... Uh, yeah, the best. You, it's get a, to, you get to choose yeah. from the best actors, the it's most a, charismatic people, hang out yeah. with them, it's blow a, shit up. Yeah, it's a, it, it, <laughs> it's a blast. You know, it's and my, my blast. sets are known. My sets are known for being one of the yes. funnest sets in Hollywood. Right. I mean, you know, the people in IATSE want to work on a Quentin movie, all right, Absolutely. because they're going to have a, a ball. Yeah. So you'd be hurting a lot of people if you quit. Anyway, uh, <laughs> will future generations be appalled by some of the current decisions... Of course. Uh, current yeah. decisions or actually we're making as a society. What are some things we do today that are generally accepted but will look bad in the future? Well, the animals. Well, you're the guy to answer that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Why? What am I doing? Well, no, because you pwned it out every week. Uh, uh, <laughs> act like I'm raping Ned Beatty in the woods. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> Uh, but animals, I would say, is the animals. First, yeah, eating uh, animals, raising well, animals, milk, torturing them. Even yeah. if we st still eat them, 
to, there's no need to torture them while they're alive. I mean, even mm -hmm. California now is good for California has passed a law. The Supreme Court is hearing arguments about it, whether it can stand in other states, but we passed a law that said you have to, you know, we're, we're not stop selling bacon, but you have to raise the pigs humanely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're smart, sensitive animals. Yeah. Probably smarter than kids. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can go and, go and adopt a pig. But what, what else? What do you think else in a hundred years? I mean, I'm, I'm off the top of my head, beauty pageants, I think, is probably going to go... <laughs> very, well, that's I, cutting edge of you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> They've been saying that for 40 years. <laughs> but, Anti okay, but they don't do one. it. Antibiotic resistance. The fact that we use so many antibiotics that, you know, society's becoming resistant to it, and we could have not so much a pandemic, but another big medical disaster from that. That's a slightly different category, but yes, that's something that's a great worry. I mean, we, we are heading toward the post-antibiotic age. Mm -hmm. I always say, I never want to take an antibiotic, but boy, am I glad they exist, because when you need it, I mean, people would be dying of a splinter again. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's certainly possible. So, but anything that we, we are doing, that we are choosing to do, that You we... know, choosing strong men dictators to be our leaders, I mean, I hope that in, the, in 100 years, people would look back at it and think this was as, as, as lunatic as we look back at some of the political systems back in, in, in history. Right. That, I don't know, monarchs in the grace of God ruling the country or something like that. England so, still has a monarch. Uh, but, but she doesn't rule. He. Sorry. I think one of the dumbest things has been taking democracy for granted. It's back to your point about 15% of kids voting. And that is, you know, and treating politics as a reality TV show. That's right. what you expect from it. You know, there, there is reality TV. Watch the Kardashians. Don't expect your politicians to act like them and then vote for ones who do. Okay. And maybe add to that that, you know, the expectation for authenticity. I mean, we don't need authentic leaders. We need responsible leaders. Authenticity, <laughs> you know, saying the first thing that comes to your mind or tweeting it, it's good in therapy. Right. But politics is a therapy. <laughs> right. in, you need to build point. a wall between your mind and your mouth. Right. And be very careful <laughs> about what you let through there. And yet some right. politicians love walls very much in all kinds of places, except between their mind and their mouth. But you can't outlaw that. Because you we... can't outlaw. I mean, in, in, right. in terms of what we, what we tolerate, we what can... we expect. Well, we can expect... You have to tolerate. That's what free speech means. Well, I... that's, you have to tolerate things. There's lots of things I don't want to tolerate in the world, but I have to tolerate. I wish I could talk to you all night, but I have to tolerate closing the show. <laughs> and, and I must say, you know, with all my cynicism, go vote. Do it anyway. It just might help. All right. We'll see you next week.